Let's start by talking about that Tenet trailer. Alon, I am so excited for this movie, and if it was possible for me to get more hyped, this trailer did it for me. So I've watched it a few times now, and I'm going to go through some of the highlights of the trailer. Before I do that, though, Alon, just quick, did you have any particular reactions to the trailer besides... Wow, this movie looks cool. Yeah, it felt like they were giving us more hints as to what it's about, which mm -hmm. I thought was pretty interesting. A lot of time manipulation going on. Right. Without giving away too much, I think Christopher Nolan it straddles that line perfectly. So to start off, one of the first things I noticed watching this trailer is the score, and I'm going to struggle saying his name, Ludwig Göransson. Oh, no, I wrote down the pronunciation here. Göransson, I believe. Awesome score. It has kind of that Inception wah, wah kind of sound to it, but a little bit more melodic. And then, of course, we get Michael Caine saying, I gather you have an interest in a certain Russian national. Pattinson asks, why did you bring me in? And then someone off camera says, you really want to know? He can communicate with the future. I'm assuming the he in question is the Russian national. The way they phrase that is so interesting. It almost sounds like they're saying he has a natural ability, like he has a precog ability to see into the future. My guess is that that's just sort of odd phrasing. And in reality, the Russians have developed some technology, some quantum technology that enables this time manipulation. We've heard the movie referred to as a quantum cold war. So my guess is they're hinting that the Russians have developed this amazing technology and the U.S. is trying to catch up through some kind of crazy spy cold war-esque tactics. Moving on from there, we see Robert Pattinson say time travel and then Washington says no inversion. So before this trailer came out in an interview with Robert Pattinson, he said that one of the only things he's been authorized to say about this movie is that it doesn't involve time travel. Now, to clarify exactly what they mean, the character played by Clemens Posey says to Washington, aim the gun and pull the trigger. He aims it, pulls the trigger, but instead of a bullet leaving his gun, a bullet flies into his gun. So that's the time inversion they're talking about here. Such a bizarre concept because when I saw the time inversion effect in the original trailer, I assumed there was some device off screen that we weren't seeing, which they had to activate. But here he pulls the trigger on the gun and that's what triggers the time inversion to take place. It almost seems like there's some off screen device that they activate and then when you take some physical action, it plays whatever event is in question, it plays it in reverse. So you fire the weapon and it plays a bullet leaving your gun in reverse. Really interesting concept. We see that Russian national ask the protagonist, how would you like to die? Protagonist says, old, and the Russian tells him, you chose the wrong profession. That, Alon, I'll leave it to you here. <laughs> That's such a cliche line. I still like it, but it is a little cliche. Christopher Nolan is a great filmmaker. Occasionally, he does have those sort of eye roll moments that feel like they were taken out of a Marvel superhero movie. We literally just heard that line in Better Call Saul, too. Remember, Remind me, what is that? Uh, a nacho. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like, I want to just go about my life. Not have to look over my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, right. You chose like, the wrong profession. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the other moment this reminds me of from Christopher Nolan is in the dark night when the two kids are sitting in the car. They see a big, they're pretending to shoot guns. Then they see a big explosion <laughs> yeah. and the kids look at each other as though they caused it. He has those little cheesy moments occasionally in his movies. I think this is one of them. So Robert Pattinson says, what the hell happened here in reference to some bullet holes in glass? The protagonist says it hasn't happened yet. So that's those hints at this time travel element. He says it's not time travel. I think we might be mincing words here. Whatever's happening clearly involves some sort of time manipulation. We see a guy getting dragged down the hallway as though by some invisible force. So rather than a gun being fired, this seems to be someone's dragging this guy down the hallway, but we don't see a guy dragging him. So maybe somebody was going to drag 
drag him and this is a playback of what was going to happen in the future. I'm assuming it's all going to make sense when we actually see the movie. We see Washington struggling with that guy and instead of firing bullets, we see bullet holes disappearing and again, bullets flying back into the gun. So a few questions here. When we see this guy being dragged down the hallway, it makes me wonder, what is it like to be under the coercion of this time inversion force? Are you aware of it? Is that guy being dragged through the hallway wondering what's pulling on him? Or is he physically moving in reverse through time and so is his brain, so he's not aware of it? It made me wonder if certain people are aware of the time moving backwards effect and other people aren't aware of it. A couple of times in the trailer, we see people with these oxygen masks. And that makes me think you have to put that oxygen mask on, go through some sort of process so you can sort of exist outside of these little time loops and make sure your brain doesn't invert along with time and you can be aware of what's going on. Very interesting line from an older woman who says, there are people in the future who need us. Robert Pattinson says this is not time travel. That sounds like a very time travel-y line. It makes me wonder how far into the future does this time inversion thing take into account? We see things like a bullet flying into a gun or a car flipping over as though it were in a car crash and we're going in reverse. But when she says there are people in the future who need us, that makes it sound like we are referring to events that are taking place more than just a few minutes into the future. So again, getting some very heavy time travel vibes from this, and I can't wait to see Christopher Nolan's take on time travel. We also see a moment where Elizabeth Debicki's character is sort of solemnly staring outside of a car window. It looks like she's being held captive in the back seat, and she starts counting down with her fingers. Makes me wonder if she experienced a car crash in the future, time inversion happened, and now it's about to happen again. So she's counting down to this horrible thing that's about to happen. I'm wondering what the emotional backbone of the film is, and maybe this hints at it. Maybe there is some horrible future event that's going to occur. Certain characters know it's going to occur, so they're existing in this awful state of I can count down on my fingers this terrible thing that's about to happen. Drew in the chat says it's like they're mincing words by simply flipping cause and effect. I think you're exactly right. And in fact, again, Washington says they this reversing the flow of time doesn't us being here now mean it never happened? Reversing the flow of time and again asking this question about we're here now, doesn't that mean it never happened? That makes it sound like these characters or someone truly does experience the future before this time inversion effect happens. So as Drew in the chat says, sounds a little to me like mincing words, some form of time travel is happening here. If I had to guess what was happening, sort of a shot in the dark, I think you can play out an event, somehow record it, and then sort of invert it and play it. But who the hell knows? <laughs> and then towards the end of the trailer, the protagonist asks Pattinson, you want to crash a plane? This reminds me a lot of the relationship between Leonardo DiCaprio and Ellen Page in Inception. That's not the only reason, though, this trailer gives me Inception vibes. One of the things that Nolan is really good at is world building and creating a set of rules for the movie, then manipulating them, combining them, and using them in really interesting ways. In Inception, we saw this with the idea that you can go to a dream within a dream, and every time you go down a layer, time slows down. Then another concept, to wake up from one of these dreams, you can use a kick, falling off a chair, falling into a bathtub. Then he combines those two concepts, the dream within a dream, leading to them having to devise some way to do a simultaneous kick, where you have a kick in the top layer dream, the middle layer dream, all the way down. So I expect that in this movie, they're going to lay out some time inversion rules, and then throughout the movie, we're going to see some pretty interesting, twisty uses of those rules. 
Another interesting thing about this trailer, Alon, is that at the end of it, I was waiting to see that release date, and then all it said is coming soon to theaters, or I think it said coming to theaters. So people are wondering if this means they're backing off, finally backing off that July 17th release date. But they are turning on the marketing machine, right? They're putting the trailer out there. So I think they're still hoping it's going to happen, but maybe they want to hedge their bets a little bit. The other interesting thing is, Alun, do you know where this trailer actually debuted? Yeah. Go ahead. Fortnite. That's right. They debuted this movie or this trailer in the virtual world of Fortnite. That's a trend that's starting to happen with uh, Rise of Skywalker. They debuted a big clip from the movie in Fortnite. And I think Marshmallow had a concert in Fortnite <laughs> and some other musicians. So that's a big trend happening. Any other thoughts, Alon, on Tenet, on the trailer, on the release date? Uh, I just can't wait. And in regard to the release date, I would prefer sooner rather than later. So if it means it can't come out in theaters, I would prefer that. Never going to happen. Christopher <laughs> Nolan is the biggest proponent of cinema, of the true theatrical experience. He's the biggest proponent of that than any other filmmaker. So I don't think there's a chance it will ever show up on digital before theaters. He would rather delay it a year, I think, than put it in uh, home theaters. Darn. So sorry to... The only way you'll see this movie alone is if you can get the time inversion device. But then you'll probably have to watch the movie backwards. So it'll be, so like, it'd Memento. be like Memento. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Which is also from Christopher Nolan, correct? That's right. That's all right. right. Co-written with his brother, Jonathan Nolan. Anyway, I agree with all that. I hope the movie comes out soon. Earlier in the week, I feel like every two days we have this conversation. Is Tenet going to release on July 17th? I know There's almost a chicken and egg thing going on here, a game of chicken, because a lot of other movie studios or the exhibitors don't want to open up until they know there's going to be a big movie to show. They don't want to open theaters, have nothing playing, and they just burn money. But at the same time, the movies don't want to come out until they know they're going to have theaters where they can play them. I was pretty optimistic earlier in the week. A lot of commenters thought that I was crazy, saying I think this movie's going to open in July. So I've since amended my opinion to say, number one, I hope it gets released in July. Number two, I think feeders are going to start to open, but I just don't know if we're going to hit the 80% threshold WB is looking for. So I'm guessing it's going to get delayed, but just crossing my fingers, the delay is only a month or two and not a fast and furious delay where they put that movie a full year already. 